So really happy, very pleased to be joined today by um, director Ninian Doff, who's represented by Pulse Films, and has agreed to talk to us uh, about all things directorial and uh, his journey into the into the business and his directing style and stuff. So Ninian, thank you very much for taking the time. I know you're very busy. Um, and the first question, really, I want to ask you is, there'll be a lot of new directors and aspiring directors, directors uh, watching this, hopefully. Um, so can you give us a bit of information about how you got into the business, what it was that sort of led you to, to wanting to become a director? Um, yes, sure. So I, um, I am very lucky in that I kind of do what I nearly always wanted to do. So I, when I was very early teenager, um, sort of got fell in love with cinema and joined a young film group in Scotland, which was called Scam. Scottish kids are making movies. That's the acronym, right. um, and that um, you know shows my age. But they gave us some enormous <laughs> clunky VHS cameras, and we could sort of ask around them and make stuff. And um, and that one hundred percent was the bug. So then I was obsessed with cinema. And I was obsessed with making stuff, and so so then I I did. Um, I did study film at a film course, but <laughs> I won't name it, not because it wasn't good. I won't name it because of the next thing I'm going to say, which was, I think it was great because I met like-minded people who we made loads of good short films in our spare time. But I don't think I became a director because I studied film at right. a course. Um, I, I think I became a director through uh, making music videos, you know, initially zero budget music videos off my own back um, and figuring that out. And that's what, sort of that's where I found my style and what I do and my kind of voice or whatever. Yeah. Um, uh, just, just through actually making stuff myself. Yeah. yeah. So in terms of the music videos, that was your, your kind of, where well, you said uh, short films at um, university at the studying and then music videos. Mm-hmm. How did you work in your way into music videos? Is that friends who are in bands or you just approach people? How did that, yeah. how did that work? Yeah. So I, uh, so, so, so I was working in sort of as an editor and like motion graphic stuff. So, uh, and I was very into the posty side of things. So I was able to do quite a lot myself, which I think is very okay. helpful. And it's kind of, maybe it was a bit more unusual back then. I think it's quite standard now that everyone can do everything. Um, but I, uh, and I was also, you know, I sort of was feeling quite disillusioned by, by the short films and like worthy directors and very right. serious. It was all very depressing and I wasn't very like that. And then I, I went to, a music video night that people will know, um, especially people in London, called Bug, where they uh-huh. show lots of amazing, very inspiring, very creative music videos. And it was back then I just contacted an unsigned music. I think they were they were in New York, and obviously they were like. So then I um uh, I made two music videos for this uh, musician called uh, Fulton Lights, and the second one of those was this music video where I motion tracked arms onto crows and told the whole story about crows performing in a park, and it was a kind of a bizarre labor of love taking up all my evenings and all my nights but kind of with the slight calling card sense to it. Like I knew it kind of felt like the funny ideas that you saw at Bug and things like that. Yeah. And it and it essentially kind of worked like that. So then even though I made it, you know, off my own back and did everything and it was kind of charmingly lo-fi, it got screened at Bug and then it did, yeah. and it got nominated for, for Budget UK MVA. And then that, and that was it, you know, that really did, that was the one thing to open a door. It, in the, it sort of, with some other work, it kind of essentially led to me getting signed by Pulse Films, who I'm right. still signed with. Um, so it was kind of all all off the back of this kind of labor of love, strange yeah. little video. Yeah, that's great though. So did you, <clears throat> so you made some short films, you made uh, the Fulton uh, video. D- did you have, like, did you go into it knowing what your style was or what you your style wanted, you wanted your style to be? Or is that a, is that a process of discovery? Like, you know, are you mm. still sort of finding your style even now? Or, or, or do you go in thinking, I want to be this type of director. I want this to be how I, how I work. Uh, that is such an excellent question and one that I'm really glad you asked because I think it's something that people don't realize especially when they're feeling a bit disillusioned maybe early yeah. in their creative experience and career there's a really good clip online I can send it to you because maybe you can share it yeah um, from Ira Glass talking about the difference between the kind of gap between taste and ability somehow and like you 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 inherently know what's good and what you're trying to do but there's a horrible chunk in all arts and writing and painting and filmmaking where you're not hitting what's in your head 
for right. a long time. And it's the most disheartening sort of point of it all because you kind of, you can tell it's not quite as brilliant as it should have been and it kind of makes you feel miserable and all that. And I guess that what that is really is kind of figuring out your voice and how you express things and how you do that. And, um, and there's a big change in what I made myself. Like, although I was very proud of things at a certain point, they even changed. So I used, because I kind of came from a posty background, all my early ideas were like visual camera tricks. Like what's a new, what's a new trick I can do with post-production or with the camera? And then I'll build an idea around that. And then what's interesting is slowly that just dropped by the wayside and it just became purely about storytelling yeah. and and how can I tell a story almost that has a three act structure to a song and, and that challenge. And so that's the like gradual development yeah. of it. But yeah, it, so, so I think it keeps changing. Yeah, I certainly started off as kind of like, I think it's that thing of trying to find taste. Like I almost, I wouldn't say I hid behind the visual gimmickry, but that was an easy thing for me where I was like, okay, yeah. that looks crazy and no one's made something look like that before. So therefore it must kind of be, good yeah <laughs> but and the, and the sort of storytelling side was probably yeah a lot lower and then that's what i just slowly worked on and got better at. so it sounds like so the, the kind of the, the the technology was your style at first because that's kind of how you learned about what to mm. do and you kind of plugged the story into the technology at first rather than the other way around it seems. yeah and i think it could give me a confidence because mm -hmm. i could point to a technique that i'd come up with and so i could say to myself well that's and music music videos at the time also they wear quite a lot of like you know probably begun back with Gondry, but this is much later, but that thing of like, oh, it's a visual trick. Yeah. But you can sort of, it's quite comforting maybe early on because you can kind of point to that and go, well, that's original and cool yeah. because I've seen it before. So therefore I have the confidence to know that this whole thing is 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 original and yeah. kind of cool because I know that, that that visual trick is a new idea. Yeah. Um, and so those are things like, well, I mean, the Fulton Lights one kind of, um, a Graham Coxon video I did where I kind of put, hundred fans together clips to make one human yeah uh, the mf doom video which was this kind of combined split screen all these things are just a, a sort of basically technical tricks but even even sort of having looked back at your work um you know as much as i've been able to to look at over the last couple of weeks even then at the start of your career storytelling seems to be at the heart of it right so even though there is technology involved and you know in your words kind of gimmicks and and those sort of ways of approaching things there is still a story there and it's and it feels like all the way through your career storytelling is at the center of that you know some people are very good at technology and and the, and the kind of gimmicks is not the right word but that's the word i'm going to use because i can't think of a better one but but you know like that sort of that is the idea that the process is the idea where it feels like the process is just a way for you to tell a story does that is that does that sort of feel true yeah 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 no completely i think even in my more visually things probably with a slight exception of the mf doom one because um that one is very visual but all the others still try to have a a, sem a tiny semblance of narrative to them. The, the yeah. Crows one, my very first one, has a crow slowly becoming a pop star, or something <laughs> like that. And the Graham Coxon one sort of has a, an ending. I think I think something I've always been aware of, and something that I still actually um, get frustrated by. And I hope I don't rub up uh, any directors in the wrong way on this. It's all personal taste, but I think a lot of music videos don't seem to necessarily either know how to end or don't think that a really good ending is that important yeah. <laughs> and it really annoys me like someone walking off into the distance for no real reason or like you know like that's not really an ending and that really i think that lets down so many things um yeah. so i always from the early days was like okay it needs it needs to reach an ending that feels like an ending rather than it just kind of drifts away yeah sure. But surely that's what hooks people often is is the story. I mean, you know, yeah. visual elements can be interesting, but they don't always sort of bear repeat viewing, whereas a, a story can kind of be different with different viewings. And, you know, one of my favourite videos is the Radiohead, is it Just, I think, with mm. that kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. unusual and not ever really explained sort of situation yeah. of the God, people, everyone laying in the street. And it's just sort of really impactful. And it's sort of every time you watch it, you sort of think, I wonder what, you know, what's going on there? Well, I think that's what probably led to me slowly making less and less um, technical ones and more and more story things was because the Holy Grail was always, if you can make it look amazing or unexpected or crazy, and then also tell an engaging story that's gripping. And so realizing that meant that every time I did it, the one the music videos that I felt were lesser or, you know, I just had that little twang inside me where I went, this isn't absolute top level it yeah. was always probably because 
the story was a bit slight yeah. and so realizing yeah at the end of the day a good yarn is yeah, yeah. Uh, you can make a, make something look insane and visually amazing and also have a character and a story to it yeah so w- when you're looking at a project so whether it's um looking at a commercial script or or kind of listening to a track for for potentially making a music video are you always looking out for the kind of the way into it being a character or a story that you can kind of get your teeth into mm. is, that, is that the process that you you use so it totally is now. It absolutely is now. And like I say, it probably used to be maybe a more visual that I was trying to cling on to. But now what I've got really into and it's sort of been, I'd say, is probably now what I do, although you can always surprise yourself, um, is 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 the what I really love in music videos. And I don't make that many music videos, um, Let's to be fair at the moment. Though I, I try to keep my, my, my aura in as such. But... Um, there's a really fun thing I feel like where you can put a whole story to a track that obviously the artist never wrote that story to their piece of music. Yeah. But then actually don't just plonk it on and hope it lines up, but truly can you build a three act structure to this song that what I've been doing in like the chemical brothers ones, especially probably beginning with probably beginning with Mike Snow, Genghis Khan video yeah. is when you take the lyrics and actually make them almost like dialogue of existing characters in a film expressing something that was not the intention of the musician but fits your film completely correctly so that you can't even conceive that the two don't exist without each other and it becomes such an interesting storytelling device because you're doing you know you're basically doing kind of three act structure with dialogue as a musical to a song that never wanted this, that wasn't designed for the story. Yeah. And as I say that out loud, that just sounds like me making a lot of hard work for myself. Like <laughs> that, there'd be a worse way of trying to tell a story, but it, when it, and it does probably lead to hours of despair where I'm just like, I don't have an idea. I don't have an idea. I don't have an idea. But then when it lands, you have this sort of euphoric craziness where you're listening to it and the track drops here. So, you, they have to, you know, the gun has to fire at three at, at two minutes 40 because that's yeah. when the drop is. So how are you going to make the gun fire at that point and retrofitting in this? And, and it becomes an amazing, uh, like really sort of almost aggressive, forceful lesson in like economy of storytelling. Like I think what I love about music videos and the reason I'm really passionate about them still and what they've done for me is they are, the, they are they, they, they've taken, the good ones have like taken the baton from, where silent films left off, you know yeah. what I mean? The storytelling that was happening at sort of peak at, at the golden era of silent movies where you got everything didn't say in dialogue and you're kind of doing that again here. And it's, and it's pure storytelling. It's like, okay, how can I make you care about this person or care about this story without tons of exposition, without yeah. someone in a car and telling you about time travel, you have to yeah. visually show time, you know what I mean? Um, and so, yeah, that's what I've been really enjoying doing. I've done a lot of, of stuff in recently. Um, that's music videos, of which, like I say, I, I, I sort of came up with and still have a lot of passion for, but I don't do yeah. a million of them anymore. I, I do the occasional one, and I'm always very happy when I do. Yeah. And commercials are like a very different thing because, and I'll uh, apologies to anyone watching this where this is condescending, but it's probably, if you're if it's a young director's thing, it's maybe worth saying lit- exactly how it works because I yeah. don't think I knew when I was starting out. So an, uh, an, ad, an ad agency with the creatives at the ad agency working with the client might spend g- genuinely over a year writing a script for uh, a commercial, maybe even longer. Sometimes you hear like, oh, this has been floating around for this long. Yeah. Um, and they'll have honed and honed and honed and written this script. And then they send it to a director saying, how are you going to shoot this script? So you're, you're sort of, you're still completely digging into storytelling and emotion and character and pace. But you are not, uh, I guess it's not a blank canvas. You know what I mean? You're like, yeah. You're, yeah. You're, trying, you're trying to sort of say the best way that you think it can go and the surprising visuals and you're, you know, changing things and tweaking things if it's a collaborative, ideally. But um, you're, um, it's a sort of different experience because, yeah, you're kind of, you're, you're kind of, you, you're, you're working with someone else's material. Yeah, um, yeah. Basically. But that sort of leads into, I suppose, the so the, the the kind of topic, the theme for the YDA this year is is freedom, and that's kind of, I suppose, leads nicely into partly why we wanted to chat to you is, you know, your your style, your directorial style, kind of does go from you know your short films, your music videos, <clears throat> excuse me, your your commercials, and then into your film, which we'll talk about. 
in a bit. So how do you how do you do that? I mean, how is that just because people want to work with you because of that? You know, like your mm. style speaks for itself, and therefore people were like, well, you know, this is what we want, so let's talk to Ninian because he, he's the sort mm. of style we want. Or do you have to kind of fight for a certain amount of like directorial style to to, to sort of seep through into all of those things? How how does that work for you? Yeah, yeah, no, that's a good point. I think there's there's two sides to it, and one is which I remember realizing fortunately early on which is rather than being annoyed basically pigeonholing is only annoying if you're being pigeonholed into something that you're not but if right. you're being pigeonholed into into what you literally do then <laughs> yeah. then it's great so if you take it right back to say my early days of music videos i never wanted to shoot bands looking sexy you know with a smoke machine yeah with no disrespect to amazing music videos like that, but I just knew I, I wasn't interested in that. I was interested in weird visuals and storytelling. So I, I mean, I literally never shot, maybe with the exception of a few cutaways where I was forced to, but I never shot a traditional performance video ever. Probably meant I didn't win a lot of jobs early on, but it also meant that I never, when I then built myself up to be someone who they knew and people who they pushed to, people would come to me going, oh, you're the guy who does like a, crazy cinematic story that's yeah. shot like you know kind of you know shot in these lenses with this aesthetic and all that and that's what we want you to do and so then you're kind of only getting the work that you want yeah so yeah basically you will get pigeonholed so just don't let anyone pigeonhole you in in the in what you don't want to do yeah. i know that like obviously everyone has to do things to pay the bills and yeah. and pay the money and there'll always be things you do and you don't but in terms of like you know what you're what you're known for you can you can sort of control it in that sense and then yeah how that then and it's interesting, it's really interesting in terms of freedom thing because commercials are a funny thing where the ad agency's written it, the client uh, has obviously a huge voice, there's a history of a brand behind it, so you know what I mean? Like if you're trying to mess with that, that's going to be a thing. Um, so it's two things. I think firstly, it continues from that sort of inverted commas, good pigeonholing. So yeah. if you're, you're, you're being approached for a certain thing that you do, then... You know what I mean? Like, let's say, like, if there's a sort of a weird comedy angle or something that people like, or it's a storytelling thing or a thing, then when you're pitching on it, it gives you a little bit more confidence to push that side. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so even though the script's been written, you can go, oh my God, wouldn't it be hilarious if he fell out the window at this point and yeah. landed in the taxi? And that was not in, you know, this isn't in the incredibly expensive commercial, but you've written it in and then everyone's kind of, you know, hopefully that's why they wanted you. It's funny. Yeah. I've sometimes spoken to creatives where they such a mixed bag and often everyone's got different opinions. You know, some will be like, this is, we wrote this for a year. Don't touch it. But others who are like almost, there's a reason they are a director too. And if you just go, I'm just going to shoot it exactly as you've written it with no, you know, no yeah. extra idea. It's kind of yeah. like, why, well, why, you know what I mean? We, yeah, we, yeah. we came to you and yeah. that's a tricky, I mean, I'm still figuring out that balance. <laughs> um, but, um, and then the style thing, I think, yeah, I think that's just, it sort of moves back to the early in our conversation, we're talking about as you acquire taste, as you acquire this, I guess you just learn a kind of a visual look that you like and your body of work without really massively being conscious about it develops a sort of coherent look of what, of yeah. what you, the DPs that you like working with, the way you like to shoot things, the way you do that, yeah. that just accumulates and sort of slowly focus it, slowly hones in. Yeah. outside of your control <laughs> yeah that's really interesting and interesting as well you said earlier you know you you said you probably didn't win quite a few jobs because you didn't want to do those kind mm. of you know slick uh performance videos and is that is that an important thing of how you kind of i guess um sort of make sure that your style is sort of the way you want it to be and you're known for a certain thing you have to kind of stick to it and turn down the stuff that you think isn't right for you even if you're kind of like i haven't had a job for however long a few months or how or longer yeah. do you think that you need to be sort of quite bullish about what you will and won't do yeah and a bit and like it's it's worth saying that like you know because i know that you could watch this and go oh well you know nice for you not not yeah. You can choose your work but i was not earning my money as a director for a long time i was yeah. earning my money um by doing after effects and editing and then right. i was like freelancing that so that i could sort of terrifyingly turn down work for three weeks while i did a yeah two grand music video in which i got paid minus money you know what i mean <laughs> yeah <laughs> so like it's worth saying that it's not that i was just like yeah. you know like it's part of the hustle and and that is a thing and 
But I think what I realized, uh, I think the worst sort of almost like making films is be like it gets better, but like it's really stressful job yeah. and it can be really stressful. I, 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 I kind of enjoy it more now, but I used to like really, really feel the pressure. Right. And, and the worst feeling in the world I realized through my own errors is being on set and realizing that you're not crystal clear on your idea. You know what I mean? You're yeah. not like, this is this is how it should look. This is exactly what the camera should do. This is why it's funny, or this is why it's moving. Then it goes here. It's going to be great. I, I believe in this to my core. And the times you don't feel like that is kind of when you're like, you know, doing a kind of doing a thing you don't do or something, and you're yeah. like, oh, I guess yeah. I'll bump through. And and then it's really really horrible, really horrible yeah. feeling and really stressful. So it's kind of a thing of like a way of reducing anxiety and stress. What well, is to not is to be in, you know, deep in my comfort zone, even if it means that I'm, uh, tur- yeah, I'm literally turning some things down, which I yeah. probably technically could do, but I just kind of be like, you know, the worst feeling is to be at the monitor and turn to people <laughs> you. Is that Is that what we're trying to do? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You know? So you have to feel quite passionate about the project and how you want, like the final vision of it when yeah. you're sort of starting out, basically, to feel like you can kind of carry yourself through and carry the crew through yeah. and the actors yeah. and everyone. Yeah. And, and then especially starting out, and I get, you know, I'm talking about my own experience, um, which, you know, when I'm talking like literally losing money on music videos, I'm sort of talking 10 years ago, let's say. So I don't know where things are now. I, I doubt they're much better. No. <laughs> but... Um, yeah like what's the point in working for free if if it's if it's not for huge gain for yourself yeah right you know what i mean like lit and people will try and do that you know like it's great for you real like you should be the only person who decides that it's great for you real if if that's what the selling point is right shouldn't be like oh yeah maybe it will because it's got like a big brand's name attached to it and that will make me seem more desirable right um it's like it's your own yeah i mean i think actually that's just i don't know if we were talking about this but it's something i'm thinking now i'm remembering it is like it's only going to help you if it's really good work, right? Right. And so if you do a crappy bit of work for a huge brand, because I think early on you can sometimes be like, oh, well, you know, it does have this huge fashion name on it or whatever. But the only thing that will give you that will give you more work and get you going is is, is good work. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. uh, and you can get lured into that, you know what I mean? Like, well, you do yeah. this for free because it's for this big shoe company or whatever. And you should only do it if you're like, oh, yeah, because that is going – that. I, I believe to my core that I can make an amazing thing here yeah. and it's going to open all the doors. And if it's not, then you, you know. So you have to be quite bullish then as a, like as a, as a director coming through, you know, if you really want to keep, I guess longevity is the thing, right? You know, if you want, if you want to stick to your guns and um, be the sort of director with the sort of style and the sort of output that, that you've got, you kind of have to be quite hard headed about what you do and don't do. And, and also kind of sacrifice potentially financially <clears throat> sort of some stuff that, you know, I guess, like you said, everyone's in a different situation, so you can't sort of be too general about these things. But from your point of view, that's that's how you feel like your career has mm-hmm. progressed because you were quite bullish about how you wanted it to progress. Yes, which um, it's tricky because that sort of makes me sound like I'm a, like, like also that you have to be a bit of an arsehole. And, I, and I'm... I don't know if you can say that you, you can self decide that because someone watching this might be like, <laughs> Minnie is the biggest arsehole I've ever met. But I, um, I certainly try to be uh, respectful and kind and good times and, and nice to, to people. Yeah. I'm not a, a shouty uh, egomaniac or whatever. I'm a quiet egomaniac. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah. So, so bullish sort of by default sounds like you've got to be a bastard to get ahead. No, no, you're right. Know. I suppose what I mean is... I no, 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 I know, but I was just, yeah. Yeah, just like, you know, in yourself, you you mm. know what you wanted to be and how you wanted to, your career to go and yeah. what you wanted to do. So, you know, you were politely yeah. declined things. Yeah, that didn't yeah. I think, though, oh yeah, that's what I was going to say before my internet went weird. I think <laughs> it's also worth saying, because this is the sort of the, maybe the dark secret of an amazing director's Instagram or an amazing yeah. director's show wheel is you are watching what the director put on Instagram. Yeah. You are watching what the production company put on the show wheel. So I have also made a lot more than you are seeing on my website right. or yeah, yeah. on my thing. I'm not saying, I made millions of things I'm really embarrassed about or think of crap, especially if someone who worked on them alone. But what I'm saying is you're watching a very tailor-made thing and sometimes you'll make something and it will, you know, people will be happy with it or be good, but it's yeah. not like, you know, your vision and this yeah. and that. So even though I like have said, 
and do what you do and don't do the wrong thing. And I mean, I, I say straight, if, you, if you're not going to be in paid, don't fucking go near it unless it's 100% going to benefit you. Yeah. But if you're being paid, like I've done tons of, you know, jobs because they're jobs and you always learn on them and you work yeah. with a crew and you get something out of it. Um, but I think the kind of the, the decisiveness, like I say, is a realization that it's really horrible to not be sure of what you're doing, which is what happens when you kind of get prompted to, to go somewhere. And, and I've, and that still happens to me now. Like I still sometimes now have to go, I just know that I won't know if that's funny or not. And yeah. Yeah. Dear God, if the director's not sure if that's a good joke, then he shouldn't be yeah. doing it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, look, comedy is another thing I wanted to talk about because, you know, a, a lot of your work is infused with comedy and comedy situations and funny characters and interesting um, sort of humorous ideas. And, and also talk about your film. So obviously, was it last year? I think Get Duke came out on Amazon Prime and it was brilliant and it is brilliant. And it is really okay. funny. And it is very much what feels like a Ninny and Doff film. So I, right. again, I, I rewatched a lot of your stuff and um, yeah. Call Unicorn Bruv, which is quite <laughs> early in your career. I think, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Which is hilarious and which is yeah. very kind of stylistically and character wise quite similar to Get Duke. I mean, I hadn't right. put it together because I hadn't seen yeah. the, the Call yeah. Unicorn for a while but i watched that and thought oh yeah that's kind of like what, what the characters from get duped yeah 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 um so you know we were aware of that i mean what was cool unicorn brother ever kind of a, like a reference point for what you wanted it it was duped? a reference it was a reference point for people who were going to give me money to make a film right. yeah. because i could pack it because i hadn't gone the traditional route of making the sort of traditional route you know it's like three short films that do well in film festivals yeah. and then they give you permission to make a feature film. And, and I sort of didn't, um, I sort of kind of weirdly did that through music videos. So almost the package for my feature film was Cool Unicorn Brav and like a Chemical Brothers video and the Genghis Khan yes. Mike Snow video. Do you know what I mean? That was it. And people were like, oh yeah, I kind of see that you can make a film. Um, cool Unicorn Brav was in, in that package. And that's another thing. It, it ties into a little bit of what we were saying about um, choosing jobs or not. That, that that came in for me very randomly and I wasn't, and again, I was, I was, I remember because I was in someone else's office. So I was freelancing still in, um, in motion graphics and editing. And I got phoned up on a like Wednesday evening by a, a, a PR company who I'd done work for. I think they basically said, they said on the phone, they went next week, we've booked a unicorn for a photo shoot. They didn't say a horse with a horn. They said a unicorn. Um, and we get it for the whole day, but we only, you know, need two photos. So we got a unicorn for the day. Do you want to do something with it, basically? Um, and it was uh, the the company is actually on the is out shot outside the office. So they're like the the you know they didn't force it in. There's no logo, but their logo is technically in the background. Okay. Um, but it was it was you know that was kind of like can you shoot it in front of our office with with a unicorn and then you can get a unicorn, and and, and I guess they used it on the sort of socials or whatever yes. too. Yeah. but it was it was very trust and very open and and in turn that sort of that's the opposite of the bullishness almost where everything in my body were to be like that's really exhaust like i have to try and turn around something in like four days once yeah. i move the weekend and um what if it's crap you know what i mean all these voices yeah. and all, and it's almost so easy to not do it but i was just remember being like like what imagine especially for the kind of work I make. Imagine I told someone that I got offered a unicorn and I just was like, <laughs> oh, it's like really hard. It's like three days away. So then I wrote like, and that's also the brilliant, the other great thing about like sort of gun to your head jobs is then I wrote the script that evening and then that morning they were like, yeah, cool, make that. And then we sort of like cast it two days later and then the next day shot it and then I like, edited it. And by Friday it was fit. So in the space of about a week and a half, the whole thing was finished. And I think if I'd had longer, or if it certainly had gone through any official channels, the script would have been completely overthought and overworked right. and it was the edges it's incredibly of it. simple. It's yeah. like the most simple, it's 90 seconds long. And, and the funny thing about that is you never know. This is the funny thing too. And choosing things like, I guess my gut was like, no, this is one to, to work because I, pro I probably didn't get paid on that. This is one to, to throw myself into. I can see the opportunity here because this thing that was made in about a week, probably, uh, I mean, you could, argue, you could argue it changed my life. You know what I mean? Like it won awards, in film festivals because it was a short film you know yeah. suddenly yeah so i had a short film having having been like a bit snooty being like i don't make short films so i made a short film and and it's played like in hundreds of film festivals around the world 
<laughs> he still does and he's won tons of awards and and i know some like weirdly i know that some insanely big directors have watched it through like really wow. like some big hollywood dudes have seen it because they were like something somebody, which is just so funny um and and uh and yeah and then also it was part of the package that led to me making my first feature film yeah and so that it, it's a weird one it sort of ties in what we've been saying but that's an er- early on in my career that that pick and choose thing i guess like yeah. that's one where i was like okay i should kill myself to make this happen because yeah, yeah. This, this one is an opportunity this isn't a piss take where you do a freebie for us for this company and stick a logo in it this is a, a you know you have to spot them but you're like oh no this is and in terms of freedom you know bless them and all that i just i literally just got to shoot what i want to shoot so yeah that's the other thing i was like oh cool like, you know maybe if they were like oh yeah but could you please mention that we uh that we're doing this deal and could you put this in <laughs> could you just then then it probably wouldn't have been worth it yeah. so it was yeah. worth it because it was like you're literally going to give me a unicorn if I, and i have to just film it outside your office <laughs> and that, that's literally the deal yeah let's move heaven and earth and <laughs> I like the fact that you and them <laughs> refer to it as a unicorn I mean I'm it, yeah. as far as I'm concerned it's a unicorn well, it was a and the thing is I never saw it in <laughs> any form but with like I didn't see it like they didn't stick this on it came it was walked onto set looking like it looked yeah. in the film and it's a documentary away, so. short I like to think genuinely, genuinely. <laughs> Yeah, it's got titanium frame, brand new wheels, got this uh, this little bell, you know, the little bell's going off, listen, ping, ping, you know what I mean, ping. I like that. What's with the shocks? Imported, the best, you can't even get them here. Nice. What you got there? It's just a unicorn, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Nice, nice. Can it, like, fly and shit? No, nah, man, that's Pegasus. This one's still pretty good, though. Like, can fly a rainbow's at its horn. Ooh, nice feature. Can it go really fast? I mean, you know, I can draw the energy out of the universe, become one with all creation, ride the frequency of the cosmos and that, travel in the fourth dimension, so, yeah, it's fast, yeah, yeah, I guess. <laughs> um, This has got, like, ten gears, so it's basically, like, the same. On the hill, it is well fast. Does it grant wishes? Does it grant wishes, man? It's a unicorn. All right, thank you. See you later, yeah? All right. Safe. Safe. So, do you still want to buy the... Nah. So, and how, you know, you, you move from um, music videos into commercials pretty seamlessly, or it feels pretty seamlessly watching your reel. How, how difficult or, or not was the move then from commercials uh, and kind of short films and music videos into that features world? I mean, the finished film, as I said before, feels very much like a Ninian Doff film. And it feels like you probably had quite a lot of creative control and control of what you wanted to do. Was that the case? Or did you have to fight for that? Or were they very kind of open about how, how it was approached? Yeah, no, I mean, God, like um, the whole thing of this job is a weird mix of like crazy, crazy perseverance and self-motivation and sort of self, whatever the word is like actualizing. Yeah. Uh, and and also just like insane luck, and, and it's so sort of like, <laughs> like there's some saying like, the harder the work, the harder you work, the luckier you get. Or something that's right. Like yeah, that. yeah. And I think that's really probably maybe it's true in everything, but I think it's definitely true in this. So because it's like, you have like, like I done everything I could to get to a point that I could make a film, but the fact that I made a film still to this day. And, and we'll hopefully make other films still to this day feels like the most insane combination of events that make yeah. it happen. Um, so, yeah. So I, uh, the, the things I'd say about that was it's, and again, another cliche saying, uh, which is don't, don't wait for someone to give you permission. So I, I was really conscious of not wanting to be the guy who always talked about making a film. Right. <laughs> uh, uh, so I didn't tell anyone I was writing the script. So I just wrote the screenplay in all my spare time around other work. I didn't take time off for it. I wrote it on train rides. I wrote it in hotels. I wrote it late at night. I just wrote, 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 wrote. Kind of not telling anyone because I was too scared to jinx it because I felt like if I started talking to people about it, then it would all go off the rails. So I just yeah. sort of quietly wrote 
and redraft and then and shared it with close, very small circle, then redrafted, redrafted, tons of read, like got it fully there, but kind of weirdly on the down low, which just for my own probably very strange, you know, I sound mad. As I'm saying that, I realize that kind of <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but then, so then, and then it was like I say, like the harder you work, the luckier you get. Then suddenly, I mean, I literally got an email from Hollywood, right? You know, wow. from an agent in America who is my agent now, um, uh, Matt Snow at Paradigm. He's emailed being like, oh, I, I've seen, I just watched Gen- the Genghis Khan music video. And then I watched the game, like literally what we talked about. Then I watched the Gamble yeah. Brothers one. Then I watched Kuno Brothers. Like, it seems like you want to make films, like, where, where's that at? And then I was like, I do, and here's my script. Bam! Wow. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then he read it that weekend, and he was like, great. <laughs> cool. So he, he, got a body he, of work, he, and you've written a script. He didn't and know you were working think, on a script. He just sort of e- uh, emailed you. No, he emailed me. Like, so it's almost like when, when, when the knock on the door came, like, and I still, you know, obviously I wouldn't have just been waiting for that. That's no, what no, I mean, no. like the, the insanity of, like, opening your email and going, huh. Um, <laughs> But it was also like, you know, I'd spent two years, you know, killing myself in my spare time to write a film yeah. that was going to be the film that I wanted to make. And and then that still goes to like, and then that way, you know, then you're trying to get this and like, you're trying to get that. And and, and in terms of the harder you work, like you get the insane thing, but if people don't know, my, my film's set in the Scottish Highlands, it, it, it's in with strong Scottish accents. It's about the Duke of Edinburgh Award, which is incredibly British. And the money from this film comes from, Toby Maguire, aka Spider Man himself, Toby Maguire's company in America, who 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 met me, liked me work, and then they were like, I think again, luck. I think I hit this tiny window where they wanted to make something unusual. Yeah. They'd make lots of stuff. They were like, I think they were just kind of like, wouldn't it be funny if we made that film? Because that's so. <laughs> I think they themselves were like, that'd be so weird if we'd made that film. <laughs> Let's make it. You know, that was the energy that they were at at that very specific yeah, yeah, yeah. point, and. Uh, and and, inc- and miraculously and insanely, that is genuinely how my my, my how my film got made. Wow. Uh, and uh, but yeah, so it's kind of like uh, it wasn't a case of I'd made this and then I made this and then someone took me by the hand and said, um, "Now you're officially ready to make a film. Let's let's right. do that, Minnie." And we're gonna yeah yeah you know, it was like a sort of aggressive uh, hard work and self motivation that then being. So that you were ready for things to happen. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I suppose that plays well to you. You know, the the question and, and the sort of discussion about your style and and it kind of, you know, moving from the different parts of your career onwards is because they bought into you, right? The reason the film was made be- was because of you, essentially, not because yeah. they they needed right. some guy to direct this film they had and they needed someone just to kind yeah. of oversee it. Which you hear about some directors who kind of get Hollywood gigs that yeah. don't go particularly well because, you know, they're just a hired gun, essentially. And very good, I'm sure. Absolutely. But it's no, absolutely. Yeah, no, absolutely. You're totally right. And it, it kind of weirdly goes right back to the start when I said sort of be pigeonholed in your own pigeonhole. And then, yeah, 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 yeah. And then you're right. Because, I, and, and I was also was tactical. You know, this makes me sound a bit gross, but I, I definitely wrote a script. I wrote a script that I thought could get made. So I didn't write the 20 million yes. thing. Yeah. But I also wrote a script that you that that was clearly the, if you like all of this, then you like this. Do you know what I mean? To the yeah. and not in a way that was gross. Like it was, you know. But it was like following the same energy. I wasn't like, oh, but I really want to tell a, a really sad World War Two gritty epic. Like, you know, like no, look, I, you know, I stick a music video in the middle of it. I like it's 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 completely it's it's the package continuing in that sense. Yeah. Um, and then and, and the other thing is that for that reason, you're right. Is Rather than writing like a real, like it's not like a cool high concept spy film, but we're like, like you do hear you hear people say, we think the script's great, but we don't think you're ready as a director. You know what I mean? So yeah. we just want to tell the script and all that. I guess it's sort of that thing of like, you're taking away the question. Like nobody else could direct this. Yeah. <laughs> like the only person who could direct this is, is the person who wrote it, who wants to do it. And then that sort yeah. of question goes away. Yeah. And, and that, and you know, I definitely had done that with the script where it was sort of written so specifically to the showreel of me. Yeah. 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 I, was like, I was like doing the job interview with the script. <laughs> ah, the Highlands. One of the purest places on earth. Hardly a foot has touched. Wait, who the hell? Ah! Okay, roll call. Duncan McDonald. Ah! Dean Gibson. DJ Beetroot. 
Uh, can I have your real name? Just that third one down there, William de Beauvoir. William de Beauvoir. Oh. What did you tell him? him to go fuck himself. Oh, nice. Who are you? Ian. I'll meet you at the campsite at 6 p.m. Be careful, you don't want to get lost in the highlands. There's danger everywhere. Hello, boys! Is that the Duke of Edinburgh? Run! He nearly killed us! We got your weapons. We're doomed. I'll make a bomb. <laughs> Where's the explosion? Yeah, the whole point of a bomb. Mr. Carlyle! <laughs> I've never seen a murder before. I'm homeschooled. This Lord of Wards caused this court. This is our number one case now. Yeah, take some of these. You'll feel fucking invincible. Your generation, you're always complaining, always saying you are the victim. Fuck off, Grandad! We have to stop them. Yeah, low super high. You won't get away with this. We always do. Let's finish this. Holy shit! You say duped, yeah! Nothing ever happens in the Highlands. I mean, you said, you know, obviously you hope this isn't the only film that you make, and I'm sure it won't be, but do you feel like that is the style of film you will kind of, not not exactly, obviously, but, mm. or do you, you know, will there be a, do you hope there will be like a spy film or, a, you know, a war film? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's, that's interesting. I mean, I, um, on the one hand, like, say, when you look at things maybe that I've also done a music video where I really love messing with genre and changing genre, like, it's, yeah. you know, doing a sci-fi, doing a this, doing a that, but they all have, like you say, a coherent thread. That is kind of me. And I think genre-wise, and, like, and I've written What well, Hope Is My Next Film and, and other stuff right. like that. And, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the tone and the genre and all those things are completely different. But the, that weird sensibility of what sometimes sometimes I think is as simple as the silliest idea on earth being treated incredibly seriously, which right. is I th which <laughs> which I think is maybe just what I do. So I've just yeah, blown yeah. it. There you go, guys. That's that's it. That's all yeah. I do. Um uh that sort of sensibility completely continues. So the next thing I'm you know, next thing I wrote in, in some ways couldn't be further away from my other film and in other ways is just like <laughs> exactly the continuation. And and like you know I talked about filmmaking being hard earlier. Um you know, a feature film is is years of your life. And I talked, you know, and I talked about um, you know, being on set and not being sure of what you did and how horrible it is. And I just like you hear yeah, you hear stories of directors kind of doing films just for the sake of doing a film. And I just like like I say, I find that painful enough if it was like a music video, I wasn't sure yeah, yeah. commercial that's like gone a bit off the rails and I'm not really feeling. The thought of just surviving the sheer like the toll that feature <laughs> takes on you if you didn't believe in it to to its minute core i just i mean i guess maybe the reason is that they are being made multi-millionaires by it <laughs> maybe that's what, maybe that's what changes it because you're just Balance. sitting there going Balance. so many houses i have so many houses <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and that's what i've not experienced so maybe it's just the price tag but <laughs> either way it's still like you're still going to be months away from any form of family or friends you know what i mean yeah, you're going to yeah. be so much stress you're going to be you know it's going to break you in some level so yeah, yeah. i mean what am i saying as i'm saying i'm like it's the price tag Duh. When, I, when i think about that it's because they're being made millionaires best to have both <laughs> surely surely I mean, i'm sure you'll achieve that you'll get it'll be a, a, <laughs> right yeah a success and a, and a, and a, a true indian doff film uh, um but, it's, but look it's brilliant and it's great to hear that you're you've got another one sort of planned hopefully for the future because um get duked was amazing brilliantly funny and awesome. and and, and so, like it was very british and that's what i guess being british that's why i loved it but uh, it, yeah. it feels like it transcends Britishness. Uh, as it, you know. Well, yeah, no, I'm glad. I mean, it was that was what was insane about it because it had because it weirdly had was American money, not you. It yeah. wasn't UK money, even though it's so British. It's not. It's very strange. Um, and it premiered. It had its opening night premiere. It was the opening. It was the opening midnight movie of South by Southwest Film Festival. Right. So it was an American audience, right? And I remember when I was flying out there, the final full mix, full grade, full post. I'd only been seen by like six people who were all 
like I think I'd already all seen a million rough cuts of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we're all like, you know, pitching all that. And I just remember being like, oh my God, like it was only then as the lights went down, did I real the uh, sort of be like, this is Scottish accents with like really <laughs> British cultural things. It was also quite good. And, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it, play, it played well and it did well. Good. Uh, yeah. But it was also exciting to realize like, oh cool, it can it, it can sort of be and then Amazon. Amazon putting out and buying it is that mad thing that it's truly global. So you can, yeah, yeah. I've amused myself with a lot of joy in watching the different dubbed versions of it because yeah. you realize how global it is. So you can watch Get Duked in Japanese and they've dubbed the really? Japanese rap and it's the greatest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, and then, and then I've had email, like I've had emails from like, like I've had fan art drawn by like a kid in China. And I'm just like, really? that's amazing. so wild that a kid in China could care enough about this film that they drew fan art, but also that like it's so. So it's so Scottish and it's so rich, but somehow it obviously is is not, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic, and it's interesting. I don't, I mean, I don't know how much you can say about this. I remember when we spoke, when we did the um, the shiny awards judging, because I think you were either finishing or kind of in the midst of. It. And at the time, you'd refer to it as Boys in the Wood, and so in my yes. head, I still call it Boys in the Wood. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes it's called Get to, it, it Was that uh, exactly. changed for commercial reasons? Yeah, yeah, no, it was. Right. Uh, so yeah, it was. So it it was really it's a really interesting journey of it in some ways. To think about it too. So it was called Boys in the Wood as a kind of working title script title that was chucked on, and it seemed to really work in terms of making people understand what they were going to read because it was a kind of a, a bit of a dumb joke, basically. Yeah. Put you in the right headspace. You're like you're not expecting a serious horror, especially because sort of some people are saying like, oh, it's a comedy horror. And you're like, it's really not a horror. Yeah. You know what I mean? The Boys in the Wood tells you chill out. It's not called yeah. like the death hunt. <laughs> um, uh, and then, and, and then, and then, and then this is where it, where it's not so good is that it then did like, you know, it, it played South by Southwest as Boys in the Wood. Right. It opened Edinburgh Film Festival as Boys in the Wood. Right. It, um, it played, all. Oh, it did a whole festival run with reviews, PR, the internet the lot as boys in the wood i see and then and then it's funny it was always in my mind and things changed so basically a couple of things happened in between that and then so one is john singleton who directed boys in the hood passed away so like right. you're suddenly weirdly punning on like this legend who's it's not like oh it's this iconic film it's also that um and then and then like i speak i've spoken about this candidly and like oh, what the reason to be clear i also was like as as this sort of new spotlight was shown on on any kind of cultural misstep or cultural awareness i'm like well i am a, a you know a white filmmaker with a predominant you know a predominantly white cast um and, and and the title is a riff on boys in the hood which is an right. iconic piece of black cinema yeah. and i don't think anyone who yeah. watches the film is you know it's not like a weird parody movie it's not like scary movie where people no, are no. like pretending to be doing it's unrelated it's just a dumb title yeah but i was almost like I would hate the conversation to be about that. I'd hate that even that misstep to be made. And so there was always an alternative title, which was Get Juked, which is okay. like what shouts in the rap, what is this? And um, and it was a very hard, absolute final hours decision um, made with made with Amazon. And, I, and it was never like forced. It was like, okay. I was absolutely on board with it. Yeah. Because I thought it was happening for the right reasons. And I still do. But yeah. the funniest thing is the biggest backlash I've had is people on the internet telling me how shit the new title is and that boys. <laughs> <laughs> I can't please you. <laughs> That's all I get. All I get is people being like, shit, boys was much better. And I go, <laughs> oh my God. Wait, I'm anyway, the positive you, thing you know. is they're obviously very passionate about the film. So, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it is funny. It is funny. Anyways, <laughs> but it was also like, yeah, not great. My recommendation yeah. would be don't do your whole PR festival tour on a title that isn't the film that comes out. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, oh, yeah. It's my one bit of advice. The best laid plans and all that. <laughs> so, look, Ian, I, I've kept you for a long time. And I really, no, you're fine, honestly. It's really, not... really interesting. One last thing I wanted to ask you is you mentioned at the, right at the start of this, or I mentioned that you were represented by Pulse, and you said you 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 have always been represented by, yeah. by, by Pulse. Right. So I just wondered what, you know, what are the benefits of having that kind of structure around you where you've worked with a company for, I don't know, is it 12, 15, however long it's been? And, and you know, how beneficial yeah. is having that kind of stability of, of having a production company that's always been there for you. Mm. Yeah. So it's, it's funny. So I've, yeah, I got signed by Pulse Films when I had made uh, nothing with a budget quite literally right. so like off my music videos. And then, so I really uh, did everything with them and it's weird on the one hand, I, it feels probably quite unusual to always have been with the one company. 
me, except for the fact that there's actually, and I don't know, it reflects very well on Pulse. There's actually quite a lot of directors at Pulse who have been with Pulse since day one as well. So yeah. Sam Pilling's only ever been signed with Pulse. I think 32 and Daryl have yeah. also always been with them, which is interesting in itself. Like that sort of gives you quite a like, oh, okay, that's obviously like a, a real tick there. Um, and then there's other ones too, like, you know, I think Dougal Wilson's always been with Blink. So you get other sort of long relationships to that and general goes in those. But um, the, uh, yeah, I guess, so I, I mean, I guess in terms of like, um, I don't have a comparison point as well. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I'd say the fact that I've never like, you know, actively um, needed a comparison point uh, speaks well. So therefore, I guess the question is, what's the, um, you know, why is that? Why why am I being so happy in support here? And and I guess support is a huge word. Like they have, you know, we've talked so much about my style and kind of what I do and Pulse have always encouraged that and been active with it. They also definitely, you know, I don't know if this is the dark secret of music videos or not, but Pulse absolutely bolstered the budgets of some of my early music videos themselves. Right. So, so they were losing money on me yeah. <laughs> for quite a while. Um, so you know what I mean? Because like the you get get crazy things from the label, and then everyone will sit down and go, "Well, we we can see that this is going to make a great bit of work, but it's it's shy of this much money." Yeah. Um, and they absolutely did that, and that's building your reel, and that's building your voice, and that's building your style of like you say, yeah. and then. And then I suppose if you can talk about the long game, that that then you get like a commercial, and you kind of like you actually you know they actually earn something off that <laughs> yeah, yeah well, um, interesting. this is part you know part of the conversation we had previously on one of these discussions is about you know freelancing versus being signed and you know the nurturing aspect of a production company and that mm. their, their whole business or you know certainly a big part of their business is to find talents you know young talents that, that they can kind of bring through and kind of help make into yeah it. yeah you know, it and i know like i'm not a universal story like i'm sure you know I'm, there's people who haven't had the story that I just said and I'm aware yeah. of that and it's and it can be really hard and really bad for people's you know mental health etc but for whatever reason I was very fortunate and you and you're absolutely right nurturing's a good point like they they did see they, they definitely like you know championed me and backed me in the early days uh, they do now but then also like you know now like you're the, the nice thing about being signed I guess rather than being on your own is you also have a well, you've got people who are looking for work for you. Right? Yeah. So you've got, you know what I mean? You've got people that are pulling in, they're talking about you, they're doing that rather than that being part of your job as well. Yeah. And then the other thing is you also have people who, you know, in this case, you've been working with for so many years who know you. So you can kind of almost talk about where, you know, if you're frustrated about a certain kind of work you're making or you have a wish to go more this way or this or that and then hopefully if you're in the right place then everyone agrees with you and they're like okay yeah let's like this year let's try and like really try and like pull that kind of thing yeah. in because we talk totally with you and, and that's a kind of like it's a creative collaboration i suppose on on, on the work you're making with, yeah. rather than you just being all on your own yeah <laughs> yeah yeah well that makes perfect sense and look i said that was the last question but i've got one more brief one so what's next is, is the You're film, fine. film fine. for you is that the sort of next step the well, next feature or are there other stuff in between then well I, <laughs> well as you'll have from like my story of how my other film got made of how insane these things go who knows do you know what i mean so yeah. so it all depends on how pieces of the universe slot yes, into each yes. other so um i've been making um finishing off a commercial now i've made a couple of commercials this year as we kind of ease out of covid lockdown yeah. stuff things are kind of busy again on that um i am writing a lot the amazing thing about writing my first film after writing the other things was it kind of gave me the confidence to realize i could write and that i love writing okay. so i'm also doing work as a writer may you know if if, if random superheroes who want to finance strange films suddenly come swooping in my life, maybe you're making another film, yeah. maybe you're making another commercial, maybe this. Tomorrow evening, someone might phone me up and offer me a unicorn. And then, yeah. and, you know what I mean? It's, it's, I guess it's like, who knows, but keep, 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 keep all the gears turning because you yeah, don't know yeah. which one it is. So um, yeah, maybe, maybe, a, maybe like a couple of years ago, it would have given me more anxiety to give you the answer, which is honest, which is like, I've, you know, who knows, but yeah. uh, these days i feel just about like you know it'll be something and it'll be something cool yeah yeah well that's a lot of a director though isn't it i mean there is that uncertainty yeah. about i guess any freelance to a certain degree freelance or kind of um commissioned position is that you, you're never 100 percent sure what's going to happen but it sounds like there's a lot of irons in a that's lot true. of irons. i remember freelance producer telling me 
unfortunately, I can't remember the unit of time they gave me, but it was depressingly long because at the time <laughs> I wasn't in it. But they were like, it takes, it was a long period, like minimum five years. They're like, it takes about five years till you believe that you will ever work again. Do you know what I mean? I totally write that. Like, I remember being like, what if this is the last commercial I ever made? <laughs> and I have to like go and get another job now. Like, it takes a long time to be like, I think I will continue like working in my. Yeah, family. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, I think I think you're there personally, and, and let's let's definitely hope so because I, I definitely want to see the follow up to get you. So, yeah. <laughs> so, no, um, yeah, no, thank you so much, and uh, and thanks for asking me on this. Like, I vividly remember the. Uh, the sort of the eternal space in front of you when you're a young director starting out and, and the yeah. sort of the daunting, I wouldn't say fear, but just like the impossibility of it that comes yeah. someone's going to sit in front of you. And so if anything I've said sort of has made like a tiny, like logical yeah. path, then I'm very helpful. It's really, look, it's been really interesting, really <laughs> helpful, really useful uh, and just, you know, very insightful. It's great to know, you know, you like, you know, your story is I'm sure going to be inspirational for, to a lot of people and, and in, just interesting as well, which is, which is, you know, half the battle. So yeah, it's great. Awesome. Ninian, thank you. Thank you so, so much for, uh, for agreeing so to do this yeah, and awesome. um, really, really appreciate you taking the time. Ah, oh, thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Thanks, mate.